We begin with more of that exclusive interview with the parents of Emily Keyes. Her life was cut short last week by a gunman who took her and six other classmates hostage in a Colorado high school. John Michael and Ellen Keyes talked about that horrible day, their daughter's legacy, and how they are determined to turn this tragedy into a positive. September 27th began like any other school day for the Keyes family. 16-year-old Emily was relieved it was a day with no tests at Platte Canyon High School. Her twin brother Casey was going on a field trip. We were running a little bit late, so we didn't get a hug, but no big deal. We got the I love yous, and that was that it's so important. But a few hours later, September 27th became anything but routine. When did you, the two of you, realize that something was wrong, that something was going on at the school? I got a call. Ellen was going downtown to to pick up toner cartridges, some you know mundane stuff. And she gave me a call from the loaf and jug at the top of the hill, and said something's going on at the school. Shots fired in room 206. Ellen Keys told her husband John Michael to get on the computer to check the twins' class schedule. Their hearts sank. Room 206 was Emily's classroom. I was in denial. Well, maybe she's not there. Emily's parents were in a state of disbelief, and so was Sheriff Fred Wegner. Bailey, Colorado is just a 45-minute drive from Littleton, where seven years ago at Columbine High School, 12 students and a teacher were murdered in this country's deadliest school shooting ever. In August, we had just had training about how to make, um, about what would happen should um, situations arise at the school, and... Uh, I thought maybe somebody uh, had had a training and forgot to notify me. And, uh, you know, th this can't be happening. And when did you realize that, in fact, it was happening? As I hear the, um, the stress in everyone's voice um, as I'm going to the call. They knew a gunman had snuck into the school and was holding seven girls hostage. They knew he claimed to have a bomb in his backpack and one shot had been fired. But as negotiators tried to talk to the gunman through the classroom door, they knew virtually nothing about who he was or what he wanted. Initially, he talked um, to the officers, yelling, you know, um, kind of agitated, you know, get back, stay down, you know, everything will be all right, you know. Emily's dad rushed to the school, but he was forced to remain on the highway a few hundred feet away with other frantic parents. Her mom was a couple of miles down the road at the sheriff substation. The only comfort the Keys had was knowing Casey was perfectly safe, far away from Platte Canyon High on his field trip. But then their worst fears were confirmed. I was right there in the parking lot. They pulled me in and were able to tell me then that she was in the room. And it was, um, it was grim because that's when we were told she was a hostage. John Michael became desperate to make contact with his daughter. I looked around and said, is there anyone here under 30? I need to do a text message. And the reporter from the flume was up there, and she uh, looked at the phone and quickly typed in the letter R, U, OK. I, that's what I asked her to type is, are you OK? So Emily receives a text message, are you OK? Yeah. And within minutes, I get one back and it says, I love you guys. When you saw that? You know, in hindsight, I'm saying she. She's in there, she's scared, horrible things happening in that room, and she sends that. It's an amazing little woman. It gave me hope, but it, it, was, it felt dangerous. And then he did text her back after that. It said, where, are, where you? are you? Nothing. No other message ever came over there. Though the gunmen had started releasing hostages, letting them out one by one, they had disturbing news about the scene inside the classroom. About every 30 minutes, he's releasing a uh, hostage. What are these girls saying as they come out? Each one of them had been molested some way. There were two terrified girls still inside room 206, and one of them was Emily Keyes. And in my heart, I knew she was going to come out. I didn't see any other end possible. But upon hearing what the gunman was doing in the classroom, Sheriff Wegner made a fateful decision to send in the SWAT team. He did traumatize and assault our children. This is why I made the decision I did. We had to go try and save them. I heard an explosion. I heard gunfire. And I think I sat down at that point, and, and the gentleman held my arm, and he, I said, What's, what the hell's going on? And told me it's not good. We don't know yet, but it's not good. And they brought Emily out, 
in front of me, um, 30 yards away maybe. At that point, I learned about where, where she'd been shot. And I was real specific with the ATF guy. I said, is there anything that would provide her comfort right now? And he said no, and I knew at that point. And when you got to the hospital, were they, the doctors were waiting? Was it just sort of a... We were put into a comfortable room, yeah. and they sent a surgeon in. And a chaplain. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it wasn't that tearful. I was so numb. Yeah. Um, that all, the tears come later. I know that you wanted to sit down because it's important to see the positive here. And you're a family that has taken this random act, as I read, and, and tried to turn it into random acts of kindness for Emily. Where does that strength come from? Where do, how were you able to take this and so quickly try to transform it into something positive? Maybe it's Emily's gift. I love you guys. That was Maybe that's wonderful. it. That text message. Her message. Her heart. Always. I love you guys. The Keys family has set up a foundation in honor of their daughter called I Love You Guys. For, for more information, please visit our website at today.msnbc.com.